Lots of people build tribal commander decks, but not all tribes are as equal as others. So I want to take some time to highlight some of the lesser played tribes, why they struggle in commander, and some ways you can make them a little bit better. Now when I say tribal, I'm talking about decks that have a commander with the type that all or most of the creatures in the deck also share. We are also generally looking to avoid running too many changelings as that kind of defeats the purpose of a tribal deck. Today we're going back to the plane of Theros and looking at the Satia tribe to see if the half man half goat hybrids are playable in commander. On EDA Trek they have about 400 decks and see a pretty good amount of play for what is a relatively small tribe. There are 29 Satyas in Magic, most of which are in green and red, along with two black and one white Satya. They have a couple of distinct themes running through the tribe, with some Satyas caring about lands and lands and graveyards, some that deal damage when certain conditions are met, and a theme of destroying artifacts. I actually really like the flavour of the artifact destroying, since basically it's just because they party too hard and destroy relics because of it. Seriously, the art on some of these is really great. The first ever Satyr was Willow Satyr, who was printed in Legends in 1994, with a second Satyr, Lumbering Satyr, printed in 1999. But then it wasn't until Theros in 2013 that we saw the tribe finally get a decent amount of numbers. More recently we've seen a bunch more printed when we last went to Theros in 2020, but no more since then. When it comes to commanders, Gallia of the Endless Dance is the only legendary Satyr to pick from, but for the first time in this series, she's an absolute slam dunk for her tribe. A 2 drop with haste that gives your other satyrs plus 1 plus 1 and haste, and with a second ability that can give chaotic card advantage as you discard at random. As a green red commander, she also only misses 3 members of the tribe, so that particularly low tribal count doesn't hurt as much as it should. Some real props to the designers on this one, since it's what this tribe really needed. As good as she is though, there is another potential commander with Annex Hardened of the Forge, who is a demigod, but makes satyr tokens whenever a non-token creature dies. He is however restricted to just mono red, which does reduce you down to only about 13 satyrs that you could run, which is a bit low for my liking, but he's definitely worth considering if you don't mind leaning into the tokens and changelings to help fill out your tribal deck. Of the two, I think Gallia is the better choice, mainly because you can just run Annex in her deck, but along with buffing satyrs directly, the potential card advantage is also really useful. And so for the purposes of this video, we'll go forward as if we have access to both green and red in something like a Gallia deck. Moving on to the creatures, we have several popular Satyrs that do land things, with Satyr Wayfinder, Voyaging Satyr, Nessian Wanderer, and Scholar Grove Dancer. This also shows off that several of the Satyrs are enchantment creatures, and while some Satyrs care about enchantments, not really enough to actually build around. For our artifact destruction, we have Reckless Reveler, Irreverent Revelers, and Wild Celebrants, which are all decent members if a bit underpowered for their stats. It does take some pressure off the rest of your non-creature spells though, since you won't need any specific artifact removal to help this deck. There are several satyrs that give plus one plus one counters with abilities like heroic, but again, not in a density that makes it worth building around. Satyr Fire Dancer, Blood Aspirant, and Fire Drinker Satyr can all deal damage if their conditions are met. However, once again, with such a low density, they're a bit hard to build around. The most powerful satyr for Commander is Willow Satyr, a reserved list card from Legends that has a tap ability allowing you to gain control of a legendary creature. Obviously, stealing other people's commanders is very powerful, and is by far the strongest creature Satius has to offer. I'm actually disappointed this effect hasn't been continued within the tribe, especially with red often having single turn steal effects. Willow Satius is particularly good with Gallia as well, since she can give haste, allowing for an instant activation when it enters the battlefield. The last Satia worth talking about is Lumbering Satia, which can give all creatures Forest Walk. But how does that help us? Well, with a Yavimaya Cradle of Growth, we can give all our opponents forests and make all our creatures unblockable. An interesting member of the tribe that could be used in a combat deck to get that final killing swing in. One common on this tribe is that most Satyrs are quite small, with the largest being a 5-4, a 5-3, and then a 4-4. Gallia does help this by pumping those numbers up a little bit, but it's still pretty small for Commander, and they won't be able to just trundle over players with a decent board state. Looking outside the tribe, there are a few creatures worth discussing as well. First is Xenagos, God of Revels, who in the story was a satyr before he became a god. And then along with his planeswalker form, Xenagos, God the Reveler. Not only is he a powerful effect to double the strength of a creature, but he totally fits in with the theme of the tribe. I would list him as a potential candidate for a commander as well, though his ability is pretty generic and satyrs don't tend to be the best creatures to double in size since they start pretty small already. There are also several cards that make Satya tokens. We've already discussed Annex, but we've also got Satya's Cunning to make a 1 1, Satya Nick Smith, who can make a 3 2 token, Heroes of the Revel, that makes a 1 1 token when it enters, 
and Revel of the Fallen God, which makes four tutus. I don't think there's enough token generation here to make it a core strategy of the deck, but it certainly will help spread out the board a bit to get some triggers with Gallia. To build Satyrs, I'd obviously pick Gallia. It's the no-brainer choice for this tribe, so let's start there. I can think of two main ways to do this tribe. The first is a normal tribal deck where we run every Satyr we can, and probably a few changelings that help fill out the numbers. We can then use green pump effects in a wide board state to swing into our opponents. We can use cards like Crop Rotation to get Yavimaya into play, and use Lumbering Satyr to make our board unblockable for the final swing. We do need to adjust for Gallia's random discard, and along with swinging in frequently, we would need cards like Genesis, Regrowth, Balagad Recovery to help get our stuff back from the graveyard if we accidentally discard it. Since Gallia gives haste, we would be able to use big X spells like Genesis Wave to suddenly flood the field in the late game, giving us some big turns. Since everything that comes down would have haste. The other way I could see this deck being built is around Willow Satyr, and have a deck with only the good Satyrs, and built around stealing other opponents' creatures and sacrificing them. Green has piles of creature tutors to help find Willow Satyr, and Red has a ton of other theft effects that can double as removal if we can run enough sacrifice outlets. It's a little bit less tribal, but it may be a way more interesting build than just another tribal beta deck. So what's the verdict for this tribe? Well, they certainly aren't going to be a strong tribe. Most of the creatures are on the small side, but they have a couple of choices that can give a bit of a power boost. Even with the pieces of token generation, I think they will struggle to go wide enough to be a big threat, but the haste Gallia provides is really important for a go-wide strategy, letting you dump out a big board state and swing straight away. And that is what really makes this tribe actually playable, Gallia. The pump effect to make everything a little bit bigger and haste means that if you can power out a big turn and make a board state, you can immediately kill off an opponent. Sadly, there aren't many satyrs with tap abilities to really abuse this. Most of them just have abilities that cost mana. The lack of many truly game-ending satyrs does drag down their score a bit, as well as their limited commander pool, reducing how they can be built. One satyr deck will basically look the same as another, since there's only so many choices you can make when still running a decent number of them. For that reason, I'd rate them as a bad tribe currently. This is a good example of a tribe that has a good commander, some solid themes, but lacking the density for a 100 card singleton format like Commander. Another 10 to 15 Satyrs to pick from to help round out the numbers, with some more rare Satyrs to push the power a little bit, is really what's needed. They very much remind me of the Centaur tribe we covered previously, close to being at least decent, but just falling short. But they are a tribe that is clearly getting more support, and should be able to shift up into that borderline rating with another set including them as a creature type. Who knows, maybe March of the Machines will help out with this, there will be some Theros cards in there. But that leaves a question, if they are a bad tribe, why do they have so many decks on EDH rec? When a similar tribe from the same plane like Centaurs has so few. From what I can understand, it's more important to players to have a good tribal commander than just good creatures in a tribe. Gallia just screams, build Satyr tribal, and that's enough for people to at least have a go at building them. And just because it's a bad tribe doesn't mean it's unfun to play. Very few tribes are completely unplayable. You just have to accept it can't be built like elves and still meaningfully participate in a high power game. That'll do for now though. Tune in next time where we have a look at unicorns. And until then, thanks for watching.